Hi, regarding couple of illustrations published to the context of block oscillations phenomenon, this video is to highlight the sensitivity to the dynamics of block oscillations towards initial distributions of the particle. So block oscillations is the phenomenon where a quantum particle in a periodic potential oscillates in effect of an external force. To elaborate this, I first need to explain to you some basic quantum mechanics of a particle in a periodic potential. Let's take the potential to be periodic with a spacing d and write down the one-dimensional stationary Schrodinger equation. The Hamiltonian has a kinetic part as well as a potential part describing the periodic potential. The solutions to this equation are of course block functions, which are simply the plane waves modulated in the rhythm of lattice, with a function that has the same periodicity as that of the lattice. At this point of time, I can only tell you that a particle in a periodic potential is a quasi-particle, with energies labeled by a band index L and a quasi-momentum index K. The quasi-momentum repeats itself within a reciprocal lattice vector and therefore it is restricted to first Brawlin zone. Now above equation with periodic functions expanded into their Fourier series leads to a difference equation that is known to be the central equation in solid state physics. This represents an infinite set of coupled matrix equations which when diagonalized gives this energy band dispersion of waves. Considering the periodic potential to be a simple cosine, which we write here with a potential amplitude scaled through the relevant energy scale. With this potential, the Schrodinger equation can be recast into the following scale differential equation, which through a similar procedure like we have just done before, reduces to this sort of difference equation. The eigenvalues that are obtained from here are shown in the diagram for the lowest three bands, where the potential amplitude was taken to be 1. W is the bandwidth. Let's add the external force, which we choose here to be constant. The combined potential that is developed is equivalent to a uniform tilt of the periodic lattice. Now to see the effects induced by this external forcing, we transform the Schrodinger equation of a particle in a periodic potential with a new wave function. This leads to an effective time dependent vector potential where the linear potential is effectively gauged away. Here we see that the quasi momentum of the particle follows classical acceleration which happens to be known as the acceleration theorem in quantum mechanics. By this, for a weaker force that does not cause two of these bands to couple, the quasi-momentum changes linearly in time until it is Bragg reflected. Now, as Gaussian quantum wave packets are much more closer to the classical description of a particle, Therefore, we choose a similar minimum uncertainty Gaussian wave packet and demonstrate the after effects numerically. So here is our initial Gaussian distribution placed in the ground band of this tilted periodic potential. Absolute square of the resulting wave packets are shown in both spatial and quasi-momentum representations where the dotted line here marks the initial center of mass location of our wave packet and the dashed lines depict the constraints to first Brawlin zone. Let's see how our particle evolves in time. It moves at a constant speed until Brawlin zone sweep. As soon as the zone boundary is reached, it gets Bragg deflected. That is the momentum reverts and it changes its direction in real space. And finally it comes back to the outset. Let's see this in real time. It accelerates and then it oscillates. 
it accelerates and then it oscillates and the cycle continues like this. This periodic modulation of particles mean position and momentum is known as the Bloch oscillations, first described by Bloch and extended by Zener. So this is a purely quantum phenomenon where the classically accelerated transport that we all expect on tilted surfaces is just suppressed. Now there are two distinct versions of these oscillations. Both mainly depend upon the initial shape of our Gaussian distribution. To highlight this I have calculated the position means shown here with a dotted line which now evolves with time. So for a broad Gaussian wave packet, the center of mass oscillates in time, while the width of the wave packet remains the same. This we have seen already and is what we call as the center of mass block oscillations. Let's see what happens for a narrow Gaussian distribution. So here you can see that the wave packet is sharply localized inside a single lattice well. And with this wave packet, the probability amplitude widens and then it shrinks while the center of mass remains the same. This type of width oscillations are known as the block breathing modes. All of this can be explained from the localized transport between symmetric wells. For more details see the article linked in the description. Thanks for watching.